Hi, boys and girls. Uh, if we were in school right now, we would finish off the year, as Mrs. Falls calls it, island hopping and traveling to a bunch of different countries with our little passports program. So today we're going to focus on India with the Ready to Read book. This is written by Chloe Perkins and illustrated by Tom Woolley. I'm going to do my best with these new words. Um, if not, Jay, you'll let me know if I'm saying them wrong, okay? And we can go over them one day together on Zoom. Namakar, that means hi in Marathi. My name is Nisha and I live in India. India is a country in Asia where more than one billion people live, including me. And here's that Taj Mahal that some of you made um, when we made our monuments and landmarks. India is made up of 29 states. People in different states often speak different languages. This is because India is very big. It is the seventh largest country in the world. More than 700 languages are spoken in India. India is split into four main geographic regions. The north of India is part of the Himalayan mountain range. To the south is the Deccan Plateau, which has many hills and rivers. The region above the plateau is large and flat and it is great for growing crops because many rivers run through it. This area has lots of farms. The last region to the west is covered in deserts. If you remember from when we studied landforms earlier this year, we know the plateau is the mountain with the top cut off. Okay, good visual for us. India has many big bustling cities. One of the biggest is Mumbai. Mumbai, you'll find Bollywood, where a lot of movies in India are made. India makes the most movies in the world. Many of them are musicals. Little red carpet action here. The biggest city in India is Delhi. Within Delhi is our capital, New Delhi, which is home to many beautiful temples and museums. You can find the Lotus Temple there. It's one of the most famous temples in India. Bengaluru is known as the Garden City. It's filled with blooming trees, big parks, and lakes. Kolkata has been home to many of India's great thinkers, artists, writers, and architects over the years. I live near Mumbai in a city called Puru with my mom, dad, and two sisters. I have one older sister and one younger sister. My dad is an airplane pilot. He flies people to places all around the world. My mom works for a real estate company. She helps people buy homes and apartments. So even though they're living in India, they point that out because these two jobs are also same jobs people here in the United States could have. Each morning, I wake up and get dressed. There are many different cl clothes in India, like the sari and the kuti. I wear saris for fancy events like, sweat, like weddings. The sari is a long cloth that you wrap yourself, that you wrap around yourself. At home, I often wear shorts, but at school, I wear a uniform, just like you guys. My older sister usually wears a kurti. A kurti is a long shirt that you wear with pants. This is a good picture here of that. After I get dressed, I have breakfast with my mom and sister. I usually eat idli, which is rice cakes. I dip the idli in vegetable stew called sambar. Time for school. I take the auto rickshaw to school. An auto rickshaw is a three-wheeled car. We don't have those here in the United States, do we? I live 10 minutes from school. The auto rickshaw picks up other students along the way. A little bit like a bus, I guess. School starts really early at 7.10. Not, that's much different for us. We start an hour, a little over an hour later than that. At my school, there are two shifts, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Different students attend each shift. We have two shifts because there's too many students to have in school at the same time. 
there are 56 students in my class. Oh my gosh. Each day we study math, science, history, maturi, which is the language of our state in either art, music, or gym. I don't think I'd fit 56 kids in our classroom. Our first subject is math. We are learning about subtraction. After our math lesson, we practice reading in English and Matari. In the big cities in India, most students learn English. It's important to learn English because many medicine labels, menus, and signs in India are printed in English, just like you guys are learning Spanish. At 10 o'clock, we stop for our snack break. Today, we're having flatbread with sabzi. Sabzi is a dish made from cooked vegetables. Once we finish our snack, we start our history lesson. Today, we're learning about the British ruled India from 1858 to 1947. Britain wanted to control India because our country had valuable spices, rice, cotton tea, and gems. India's resources made Britain very rich. The British built factories and railroads all over India to make and move more goods, but many Indian people were unhappy. Britain made Indians work for little money and to fight in their wars. During food shortages in India, Britain did little to help. As time passed, people wanted the British to leave. A man named Muhammad Gandhi began a movement to end British rule in 1919. Gandhi told people to stop attending British schools and to stop working for the British. Gandhi was imprisoned a, free, a few times, including once right here in Pune, but that didn't stop him. He told the people to make their own food, clothes, and own goods. This way, the British couldn't make money from taxes on the goods that Indian people bought. It took many years, but Gandhi's ideas worked. And in 1945, the British began talking to Gandhi and other leaders about Indian independence. And in 1947, British at last gave back the power to the Indian people. After science and gym class, it's noon and school's over. I take the auto rickshaw home. I play cricket with my sisters and other friends. Cricket is a very popular sport in India. At six o'clock, I have my hobby class. Hobby classes are outside of school and you can learn all kinds of subjects. My big sister learns a traditional Indian dance. My little sister learns piano and I have learned speed roller skating. That sounds fun. When we get home, my sisters and I discuss Diwali. Diwali is a Hindu festival celebration for five days in October or November and marks the new year in India. On the first day, we clean the house, just like we talked about for Chinese New Year. We light clay lamps, which represent our inner light on the second day. On the third day, we eat yummy food and watch fireworks. We exchange gifts on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, we have a big meal with our uncles. After dinner, we talk about Diwali and we eat dinner. Tonight, we'll have vegetable curry. Curry is a spicy sauce that you eat over rice. After dinner, our dad gets home from his latest trip. He brought my sister and me souvenirs. My dad brings me back souvenirs from all of his trips. I have things from China and Iceland and the United States too. One day I want to visit all these places just like my dad. Would you like to visit India someday? And Jay, I know you have, so I'm going to be asking you to tell us more. Here's a picture of the Indian flag. Okay, you saw it in a couple of the pictures. Um, here's a fun fact that's listed on the last page. Did you notice the people flying kites in this book? India celebrates its independence each year on August 15th with ceremonies, speeches, and kite flying. 
The kite symbolizes freedom. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the book. See you later.